Hey everybody, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use EQ or equalization or an equalizer as a uh, on a mixer or as a filter in your in your mixing software. Uh, and uh, we're just going to look at a few a few features, how to, what it is, how to use it, and um, we're going to look at the basics. And also, I'm going to show you a way that you can target some certain frequencies and get in a little more if you want to do that. But at the very least, you're going to learn what equalization is, or what we call EQ. Now, EQ is how we raise or lower certain frequencies in an overall sound recording, or while we're recording. And there's different types of EQ, but I'm just going to keep it simple right now. We're just going to talk about lows, you know, mids, highs, maybe, you know, that's it. Low, mids, and highs. <laughs> So I want to draw your attention over here to my uh, mixer screen. And I realize it's not super in focus, but it's fine for right now. I've just got my camera overhead. And we've got four circles here. We've got four uh, channels or four bands, if you will. So we would call this a four band mixer or four band equalizer. Uh, we've got a low dot around 80, 80 hertz or 80 cycles. Uh, per second. We've got um, a low mid, which is 400 right now. And we can change these settings. These are not set in stone. Right now they're set in stone. We've got high mid at 2000 and we've got highs at 6000. And those are cycles per second or hertz. Let's listen. And here's this is what I want you guys to do when you get time to try this out. This is the way you're going to teach yourself. You've got to do this you've, so you understand the effects of uh, what's happening when you turn, start turning knobs. So I've got the 80 selected. I'm going to now turn it up and you can hear the difference. So this is, oh, I'm sorry. First, I have to engage the mixer. <laughs> Let's turn it on. All right, there we go. The, the EQ is on now. Uh, and you're not hearing any difference because it's what we call flat, right? You see the line is flat. It's not, I'm not boosting or lowering anything. Now I will. So I've got the 80 on, 80 is on, 80 is on. It's going up, it's up, it's up pretty high. And now you can hear, hopefully, uh, that I've got a little more, some resonance in my voice. I've just got a little more body there. And similarly, if I lower 80, I'm back down to zero. Now I'm going even lower, I'm lower. I'm just obliterating everything around the 80 uh, 80 hertz range and my voice is somewhat thinner now I do want to point out that you're not going to hear this change in my voice so much because 80 is pretty low we're definitely into the bass range I do have a bass baritone voice but most people don't so 80 is not going to do anything to most people's voices but I have a cajon here that's got a pretty low sound so let's hear what that sounds like and I'll start off by uh, raising it You know, especially if you're using headphones or good speakers, you'll hear that. If you're watching on your phone or your tablet, you're not going to hear much difference. But here, yeah, we're not we're not really hearing any of the the bass from the cajon. And now I'll raise it again. Yeah. So we definitely hear it. So that area, 80 and below, or 100 and below is going to be the parts of music that we feel. It's going to be the rumble stuff, the bass, the thump, you know, the part that hits your chest if you're at a rock concert or some concert. It's what we feel. It's also, so that's good. We want that. That's the exciting, that's the, you know, when there's uh, stuff in a movie like an earthquake or an avalanche or something exciting, that's what you're feeling. It's all that low stuff. However, that can also be noise and garbage and stuff that makes your mix sound horrible because it takes up a lot of data. It takes up a lot of, it's still going to be trying to vibrate your speakers. Even if it's way down at like 20 or 30, uh, it's going to be affecting, you know, your mix. So what you can do uh, is roll that off with a button like this. And now you see how that, that curve, it just dives down after about 100. Uh, and it's basically, it's called a high pass filter at this point. It's letting all the highs pass through and it's stopping all the low stuff. So now I'm recording, if a, if a truck drives by in front of my house right now, it's not, it's not gonna capture at least the low rumbly stuff. And that's good. That means my recording, especially if I'm multi-tracking, it's going to keep it clean. It's going to keep things, you know, I'm going to hear what I want to hear 
I'm not going to be recording a lot of rumbly stuff uh, that could be a cumulatively quite noisy and it's a lot of data and it's just going to drive people nuts. It's going to make your music horrible. So let's, let's keep going up. Let's go to 400 range. Remember this is 400 so it's close to A440. Middle of the piano, it's just our mids. And I'm raising it up, 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 pretty high. Kind of weird sound there. Uh, very muffly, but I just want you to hear the difference. And now I'm in telephone land. I've got no mids. It's all high, transistor, tiny radio sound, and back to normal. Okay, let's go to 2000. These are our, this is uh, uh, high mid, it's called. That is not a pretty sound at all. <laughs> it sounds like I'm made of aluminum foil. And now I've got it, I've rolled it out. It's another weird sound. But we're not, you know, this is just so you can hear kind of the range of, of what it is affecting, what these frequencies are doing. Let's go to the highs. Now this one, get ready you guys, uh, sibilances are the S's and things, very harsh, but I've got this cranked way up. And again, this is like 6,000 or 6K, and let's roll it off. And now I don't have the S problem, but it sounds like I'm talking through a handkerchief or something. So uh, that is the extreme, you know, those are, those are extremes on each one of those frequencies. Now we also have a roll off on the upper end. So if you had a high-pitched hiss or there's whistle sounds or you want to really get rid of those sibilances, those S's or whatever, you can hit that. And now you can tell with my voice, it didn't affect my voice a lot because my voice doesn't have a lot of sounds that are up that high. You know, maybe some of the S's, um, but they're perfectly audible. It sounds totally natural, but we're not getting up, you know, those really high sounds. So. A good practice, I think, for a lot of the things we record is just roll off the lows, roll off the highs. You don't need them. Then, I want, now before we go, uh, we're going to look at a little more of an advanced feature because some of you might want to employ this. And so I've got it out of simple mode now and I get more control. I get more knobs to, to, to use. So let's go, I'm going to go down to the 400 again. And you can see that I could still raise and lower it, right? Um, but I've got more control in as much as, let's see, let's raise this up. Now you can see that it's just a, it's a, like a curve, right? There's a bell curve. And right now it's not just affecting 400, it's affecting everything else below and above it in a curve, in a shape. Well, I can change that shape. I can change that with this, which is called the Q. And the Q, and you can see there, I can, I can basically squeeze that, uh, squeeze the amount that is being affected. I can close that width, or I can open it up, and that's what we call a notch filter. And on top of that, I can also, in this particular mode in the mixer, I can now change the frequency. So I can roll around, and I can scan for sounds. And I can do something like, uh, maybe for my voice, oh, I kind of like, hmm, I like that, that sort of resonance in my voice. Now, that's kind of a lot, but if I pinpoint that resonant range in my voice, and then I just bring this back down a little, and maybe I'll open it up a tiny bit more so I get a little bit more range. Now, I think maybe for my, for my particular voice, that could be an improvement. Let's go back and listen to no EQ. This is no EQ. Okay, it's not horrible, but maybe I want to sound more like this. I want to have a little more warmth in my voice. At the same time, we're not always trying to add, you know, it's not always about boosting frequencies. We also use EQ to remove certain frequencies. So another way that I can use this particular feature, and I, again, I'm going to go up to kind of an extreme here. I'm going to turn this way up. I'm going to scan for a sound in my voice that I maybe I don't want to have in this recording. I think, oh, this is not helpful like that. Whatever this is, I want less of that. <laughs> so so I'm going to go back and if I'm going to find the stuff that's not pretty and I'm going to get rid of it a little bit. I'm just going to lower that, take that out. So I can combine maybe in a, in a certain instrument mix, I can have a little bit less of this stuff and I can have a little bit more of this stuff and if it sounds better, it sounds better, right? So I can use that. Um, another reason you might want to use EQ in your recording, into your recording, 
is for, let's say the microphone has a certain quality and mics do. Every single microphone, like this mic I'm using now, is kind of harsh. It's got, uh, it's a shotgun mic. It's not great for, for people's voices. So maybe I, I'm gonna go back and, and uh, add this little resonance in down here because I think that sounds better. So uh, you can add, you can subtract to compensate for a microphone or maybe the mic placement or the way an instrument is being mic'd, you're getting a certain kind of frequency bump. You know, it doesn't sound like the instrument actually sounds, but when you put a mic on it and it's going in, you're listening in headphones, it's like, what is that? You can, you can sort of make some, um, you can make some accommodations while you're recording. Now, that being said, and I'll say this in the other videos too, we have a, another video on compression and we have another video on uh, noise gates, but especially with EQ, uh, sometimes I do just record flat if I'm gonna mix it later, all right? If I can go into my audio recording software later, I might just leave everything on the recording, just record it wide open, no EQ. However, you can, like I mentioned, there's no point really in recording all that low rumbly stuff. So I'll probably just get rid of that in the recording so my initial recordings are cleaner. But you want to be careful that you don't over EQ stuff, especially if you're going to edit later. Now, if you can't edit later, do the best you can going into your recorder. Uh, like I am now, I'm not editing these videos after I make this recording right now, this is it. Um, so just, those are a couple considerations. Are you gonna be able to sound edit later? Are you gonna master, you know, how much post-production is there gonna be? If the answer is none, get it while you're capturing it or you're going out or you're broadcasting or, you know. And this same stuff, not, this is not just for recordings. This applies to live events where you've got a PA and you're trying to dial in sound. But for our purposes right now, we're just looking at maybe losing it, for using a mic and a mixer for looping or for doing basic video recording like I'm doing right now. Okay, let's take that off. I hope this helps you guys. Um, remember to watch the other videos on compression and also using a noise gate, but this, is, um, this should get you started with doing basic EQ. All right, thanks.